to run the model many, many times, many, many realizations, and each realization is going to use a different draw from the probability distributions. And as a result, you're going to get a probability distribution of all outputs. What we've been seeing here is not probability distributions, it's, it's output from many, um, many particular runs of the model with systematically varied parameters. Here we're going to be imposing distributions. So to do this, what you're, you're going to do is go to the parameter section and go to the freeform area and, and uh, put in a, uh, an expression. These, after all, are just Java expressions. So we're going to put in an expression for, um, for these values. So, um, so here, average illness duration. Let's, let's go put in a, um, a uh, distribution here. And I have a distribution there, but maybe we'll start with a, a very simple one. Maybe this is a uh, uniform distribution um, from 0 to, what was its original value? It was, it was 15, right? So maybe from 0 to 30, say. Um, so we'll draw it from a uniform distribution here. Uh, and we can then run it. And here, that parameter will have a distribution uh, imposed for it. Uh, and you can run that out. And indeed, we'll again see the sort of uh, weight effect towards the bottom. So what we're doing here is we, it's kind of like we're feeding in a distribution for the parameter and seeing what distribution pops out for the results. Um, quite straightforward. We can do this obviously with respect to an arbitrary number of these parameters at once. So. Um, here, each time the model is being run, this draws a new value from that uniform distribution between 0 and 30, and imposes that, runs the model up for one realization, summarizes the results, and goes on. Okay, um, okay. so uh, let's go stop this. Um, just to emphasize uh, that this is an arbitrary expression we can put in there we may want to impose more, something more like a, um, a normal distribution. So what I have here is a normal distribution with um, a, um, mean, I think it's a standard deviation of five. Uh, is that, a, is that a, a mean of five and a standard deviation of 15? Um, it's an awful large standard deviation and a, and a, a minimum of, of zero, it turns out. So you can do that with a max of zero so if it's less than zero, it'll be zero. Otherwise, it's whatever's drawn from this distribution, normal, 115. So here it's a truncated normal, truncated, so it doesn't go below zero. Um, and uh, just as readily, we could, we could draw that there. Um, run it. We'll again see. Distributions or, or histograms over time. So, a set of so successive histograms here. Um, and each of those histograms is approximating some underlying distribution, uh, which results from this distribution we can put for this for the parameter. And here we have the luxury of specifying you know, how, many, um, how many times does it run. And if we did this with respect to multiple parameters at the same time, each of them will be drawn independently from these distributions. Uh, and and the, the whole thing will be run. Okay. So um, here we have a, uh, of a case of, of uh, Monte Carlo based analysis. Let me ask this. Um, if you were to, um, one feature I probably should emphasize about this. Uh, so we, this is sort of an illustration of the earlier point I was making about very sort of uh, set variable sensitivity to outcomes. So um, that uncertainty associated with the parameter, relatively speaking, it had a, a rather bigger impact on sort of the width of the underlying distribution around time 40, if you look how big this is, um, sort of how wide this distribution is, than it does by time Parameter 
big an effect as variability is something else. But if you're looking further out, the, the width of the histogram out here is a testament to the fact that that parameter starts to starts to really have an impact. And indeed, this if, if, if I were to give a, a couple lectures in mathematical epidemiology, you'd understand that this has a lot to do with the phase of the epidemic evolved. Because what's going on out here at this phase is predominantly driven by the spread of the infection person to person. It's not as much driven. There's some impact, but it's not as much driven by people's recovery times. Um, and out here, what you have is, and in fact, the reason the whole curve turn, uh, turns around, if you think of it from a stock and flow perspective, um, at this point where it starts uh, declining, you have either at an individual level the effective reproductive number going below one. In other words, a given infective on average will infect fewer than one person before they recover. And so the number of people who are getting infected goes down. Over here, each infective might have been recover infecting two people before they recover. So it spreads really quickly. Um, it's kind of like uh, before they recover, they've left two people to replace them. And each of those people leaves four. You know, or each of those people leaves two, therefore four overall. Um, over here, what you're getting at an individual level is few people infected before someone recovers, because there's few enough um, people susceptible still around. But um, more tellingly, at the population level, what you get is more people recovering than are getting infected. Hence, the number of infected goes down and declines. So from a stock and flow perspective, which incidentally is a very effective way of thinking about the dynamics of agent-based models, even if they're not implemented in a system dynamics term, the, the, in terms, the, we can still think about the stocks and flows involved, because there are stocks and flows involved you know, by which we could characterize these dynamics. Here we got this decline because people are recovering. And the um, amount of time that it takes for someone to recover becomes really, really important in this phase. If they're recovering more quickly, this is going to be declining more precipitously. Um, if, they're, if it takes longer for them to recover um, from infection, then it, it, this it's going it's to take a longer time before it really gets um, very low. There's going to be more infectives around for a longer amount of time. So it's no accident this becomes really, really wide the histograms considered as sort of vertical slices through here become much wider in that later phase of the epidemic. Um, okay, so uh, that's an example of sort of differential um, uh, differential sensitivity. Um, if we were, by contrast, if we were to look at infection chance of infection probability, I would um, uh, I would vouch. Well, you know that would be actually an interesting thing to do. Well, let's. Let's um, throw a caution in the wind here and uh, let us go and put a value back for 15 there. And let's draw this. What the heck? Um, let's draw this from a uniform distribution um, between 0 and 1, something like that. Um, 